So what we're looking at is, is, is this is the based off properties. Um, and all we've got the piece we're looking at tonight, which is this piece right here. It's owned by Extel. I wanted to go through the timing of um, the Mayflower properties. So this is this is the whole sticking Mayflower um, property to begin with anyway. Um, in 1984, there was an original density determination that was granted on the whole sticking Mayflower property. In 1987, there was a development agreement recorded. In 2002, there was adop adoption of the RSPA plan which was the resort specially planned area. And it codified um, this property, this particular property with 1,024 ERUs. 2015 adoption of the J-Spot plan, the Jordan L specially planned area. Again, codifying this property with 1,024 ERUs. That's the target density. Um, October 2015, application for master plan density, density determination constraints analysis submitted for Mayflower Resort at Deer Valley by Stichting Mayflower. So that was the Jack Johnson Stichting application. November of 2015, the planning department accepts the application as complete, so that's important because that starts the vesting, the time for the vesting. Um, at the time the application was deemed complete, the code allowed for commercial ERUs that did not count towards the target density. So that 1,024, was the target density, however, if they had commercial uses on the site, that was over and above that thousand um, twenty-four. February 2016, over 2,300 acres of the Mayflower Sticking Mountainside parcels were placed under a letter of intent with an XTEL entity. October 2016, the Mountainside parcels were officially contracted via a purchase and sale agreement. November 2017, BLX Mayflower, or BLXM, an entity of Extel closed escrow on the mountainside parcels. May of 2018, BLXM turned in an amended application for the Mayflower Resort on the mountainside parcels. So again, they're amending the original application that was submitted by Stichting Mayflower in 2015. September 2018, BLXM to make an irrevocable donation of a $16.2 million, nearly seven acre parcel to the Military Installation Development Authority in the United States Air Force for a military recreation facility and conference hotel. So this is a, a brief summary of the project and we'll go into some more detail on it. Um, the acreage for this parcel on the west side is 940 gross acres. As mentioned, the base density is 1,024. They're requesting 536 mining influence zone ERUs out of what they feel is 710 potential ERUs. Commercial uh, retail is 250,000 square feet, um, and there's 410 hotel commercial ERUs. The recreation center, and I'll show you that on the site plan in a minute, is 68,000 square feet. The MIDA military recreation uh, facility is 415 units. <coughs> They've got a proposed workforce housing site that would be, and building that would be 95,000 square feet. There's 637 acres, um, or 67% of the project site that's open space. Ski lifts is approximately 12. Skier capacity um, is at 6,000. They've got day skier parking stalls of 350. An additional 200 parking stalls that would be open to the public inside the uh, um, military recreation facility, structured parking. There's a total of 2,921 spaces uh, off street parking. That includes the MRF and the day skier lots. So there's a total of 3,471. Peak occupancy of the site is 7,116 individual skiers. Um, this is the original, or this is the, the J-Spot plan for the village area. So a lot of what we've been talking about is this area right here. Uh, and this is, the, this is the 
neighborhood plan in the J spot. So you can see here you've got high density resort, you've got medium density residential, and then you've got some single family here um, outside of outside of the village area. This is the proposed master plan. So that pink area is the resort village area, and then the the yellowish is the single family residential and kind of caramel color is the medium density. And here you can see the, the plan overlaid on that on the master plan. So all along as we've gone through the process of getting going from the neighborhood plan and the JSPA code to a plan that the applicant presents, those land use density bubbles move. As you'll see, this one is moving, has moved. What I've really looked at is the target density to ensure that they're at or below that target density. But what they've done is they've gone to a more north-south um, alignment for the village, which runs along the contours instead of kind of against the contours. So to me, it makes more sense for that scenario. There's a close-up of the the village within the resort village high density center area. So the visions of the J spot, I wanted to go over these just so as we start going through their proposal, you can see that what they're proposing does align with the intent of the J spot code. So the vision of the J spot is to provide amenities supporting the year round activities. In addition to providing enhancements to the Deer Valley ski system, the J-SPA will provide amenities and activities year-round <coughs> for guests and residents, including density pods as defined below in 2.1.2.6, designed in a manner to support recreational activities of the area, the quality standards of four and five-star hotels, encourage 18 to 36 holes of golf and private golf club, which they're not doing, not proposing, Fitness and Wellness Center, which they are proposing. A complimentary <coughs> trail system which connects to uh, with the Wasatch County, Summit County, Park City, Deer Valley, Jordan L State Park, and Wasatch Mountain State Park trail systems. The potential for enhanced lakeside access and facilities for boating, fishing, and water sports. <coughs> Retail dining and entertainment, transit and people moving systems to access all major density pods and resort features and amenities. Adequate and accessible parking. A wide range of well-segmented segmented real estate products, gathering places that create a vibrant mm -hmm. village center and area, and immediate access to local recreational activities that are unparalleled. <coughs> so in 2.2.1 of the JSPA code, it says that resort village means a center or hub for the JSPA. In order to qualify as a resort village, the area or zone must have the attributes listed below. A resort village can be located in more than one property. So these are the components that make up the, the resort village. Um, there are significant retail, dining and entertainment facilities, a minimum of 650 units, um, must be designed to accommodate the 2400 foot rule. So that's, that's the, the 1200 foot from the center of the village to the edge of the village walking distance. It's all intended to be pedestrian friend friendly and walkable, and I'll show you the slide on that in a minute. Um, a pedestrian walk experience which links resort features and other elements in the resort village together and serves as a focal point for visitor foot traffic. Each resort village shall have a minimum of one acre community space, plaza with half acre minimum in a consolidated area and other resort components, a minimum of four of the following planned uses. Condominiums, hotels, timeshares, or other shared ownership products, private residence clubs, townhomes, single family homes, seasonal community housing or other affordable housing meeting the affordable housing requirements of Wasatch County, or meeting conference facilities. So as you can see from this slide, they've got um, the uses listed on the right hand side of the, slot of the picture there, hotels and condominiums, day skier services, um, day lodge, five star hotel, um, 
one five star hotel off the screen. Here. Um, number of condominiums, townhomes, uh, workforce housing, which would be over in this area. Uh, ski Valet Summer Amphitheater on the Ski Beach area, Visitor Center, and Primary Skier Drop-Off. This is the 1,200 foot quarter acre or quarter mile walking distance from the center of the village to the outside extreme of the village. Um, so that's a code requirement that they um, comply with. This shows the commercial uses in the village area. So you can see, based on the colors there, that the blue is food and beverage. The red is retail. The pink is skier services. Um, the kind of brown is amenity. Um, this is kind of a uh, uh, workout exercise facility. I don't know what you call it. Uh, yeah, rec center. I'm not sure what this is here. And then we've got a conference center here. It's part of the uh, military facility. Um, this is the ski plan. So there's a number of runs and lifts that will converge at this area, and they've got a, a large ski beach to um, that all these lifts would kind of dream to. This is one slide out of many that just kind of shows the, the design of the, the core center of the village. So this is the area where you've got ground floor retail, second floor um, restaurant or, or residence, and a ice skating rink or some facility like that down in the middle there. Um, this is also a cabriolet type lift that would take day skier um, people from the parking area here up into the center of the village and into the, the uh, lift area. So as part of the constraints analysis, there's a, a slope analysis required, and along with that, there's reviews of soils and faults and wetlands and drainages, floodplains, all those types of things. Um, but this shows the 30% slopes and greater in red or pink. I'm not sure what color that is. Um, and you can see as I zoom in that, that they've got the village on areas that are under 30% slope. There are some areas that we're going to have to work on and refine. For example, the uh, workforce housing here, as you can see, is on 30 plus percent slopes. Um, and that's one of the conditions that we'll get to that, that needs to be moved off that. Um, so as part of the constraints analysis and the density determination, um, we've been talking about the mining influence zone. And the code actually has a reference regarding the mining influence zone. And basically, oh, well, let me just read it so, so we uh, are clear on it. The ODD, which is the original development uh, density determination, sorry, which was reported in 1987, restricted development in the area called the mining influence zone on the basis that mining may continue. Mayflower now has the power by court order to limit and restrict all mining development on the surface of the property to avoid interference with all recreational and residential uses in the development pods within the mining influence zone. No density has been assigned to this area. Um, the plan on B14 provides for development on, a, on only a small portion of this area, making all of this area available for development would have resulted in a significantly higher original density. An increase in density as a result of the development within the, this mining influence zone will be subject to a physical constraints analysis in the preliminary approval submission by the developer. So this is out of the 1984 uh, approval. You can see that there is a mining influence zone shown at that time. Um, and the peanut shape that you can see there in yellow equates to about 35 acres, if you scale that out. Um, what the applicants come back with is, is a circle that's been kind of defined by where they've done studies and found 
um, more of the issues with the mining influence. So this circle equates to about 26 acres. And so what these colors represent that are shown in here is, is where they've got a crosshatch is where the original or the current land use bubbles go to. So um, what, they're, what they've shown here in pink is outside of the existing land use designations. So for the neighborhood, or I'm sorry, for the resort village in pink and the medium density in the caramel color, they've taken the additional acreage outside of the existing land use bubbles and taken that acreage which, for example, in the medium density residential there's 15 and a half acres of additional area outside of what's already been planned. And then on the village center um, high density mixed use there's five <coughs> acres. So in those two zoning areas it's a straight density so for example in the resort medium density it's 20 units per acre uh, multiplied by the 15 and a half acres or 310 units per acre the five acres of the resort village high density at 80 units per acre is 400 and so a total of 710 that's where they came up with that maximum potential density that i mentioned before uh, another constraint that we look at is the view shed analysis. So what that is is a ridge line review so that there are not homes up on the ridges. And just as a caveat to that, Deercrest was approved before we had a ridge line ordinance. So there are a number of ridge line violations there. But, but we've got the viewing platforms that are shown in this map and we've got some pictures from those various viewing platforms. <coughs> You can see from some of them that there are no encroachments. There are some that are, that are going to cause issues as we get into preliminary and final plats. Um, our code does not allow lots to be platted if they do violate a ridgeline, so those will have to be moved down. Heights will have to be lowered, building envelopes to pull them down, or whatever um, needs to be done. Again, you can see some in this area here. Have issues. <clears throat> All of these will have to be further refined and preliminary and that uh, final. This is the project open space. As I mentioned, there is sixty seven percent, so they've identified recreational open space and active open space um, and then the developed area by acreage. Um, trails are a very important component to the uh, proposal and the J-Spot plan encourages a very robust trail system and the intent there is is that there's a year-round um, high occupancy rate so people will go and stay there because there are opportunities for recreation in the summer, not just in the winter. So this is the J Spa trail plan. You can see in this area here, there's quite a, uh, a number of trails in that area. Um, the blue colored ones are backcountry trails. This is the proposal from the developer from a master plan stage. Uh, you can see up higher on the mountain, they've got backcountry trails. As you get closer to the village, where the blue trails are, you've got more urban trails, hard surface trails, there are sidewalks or hard surface paths, that type of thing. <coughs> this will again need to be refined further, but the intent is that, as I mentioned, this connects to Wasatch Mountain, connects to Deer Valley, Park City, Bonanza Flats, um, everything on all four sides of the project. You can tie into miles of trails. Uh, the roads master plan for the area. Um, I think everyone's familiar with the Thornhill Parkway that's going out to Highway 248. Part of this um, roads master plan is the portals. The portal here on the north that's um, adjacent to the Deercrest Gondola. And then a portal here on the south that's 
approximately the, at the location of the uh, utility tunnel that's there now that's existing. Those portals are intended to be built at some point. Um, that's something we'll need to work through as well. This is their um, roadway grades. You can see that um, their roadways, uh, they have some that are getting to 12% grade in the red. Everything else is, is uh, in the green and yellow is below 10%. Um, transit is a, a big aspect in the JSPA as well. Um, the applicant is committed to provide transit in their project and when there is a larger transit system, they're committed to accessing that as well. Um, I wanted to go through some renderings real quick just so you, you can see the flavor and the scope of this, this project. So this again is that very center of the village where you've got the ice skating rink. The ski beach would be to the right of the screen. Looking to the north. So this is the ski beach looking towards the reservoir. center that I mentioned before. You can see the cabriolet that would be going from the day skier parking towards the village, um, dropping people off in the village. Um, this shows the intent of the village area to be something that is vibrant year-round. So even in the summer you're having farmers markets or <coughs> concerts. Um, things that bring people into the village and support the retail, restaurant, commercial activities. And then the outdoor activities, summer and winter. Um, they have a wayfinding plan. Part of being able to get around in the village is to have signs that show you where various uses are, um, things are located. Public art plan. Um, this is a letter from GDA, who is our review engineer, and he's got some conditions, so what, what the Planning Commission forwarded to you was a conditional approval, so all these conditions he's listed, as well as the DR, uh, DRC conditions, are something that we would like to see um, as part of the motion, um, but he says it's our finding that the above plan demonstrates an adequate effort on the part of the developer to promote the objectives and characteristics of Wasatch County and respective zones as outlined by the Wasatch County Land Use and Development Code. As such, we recommend proceeding with master plan approval. The following concerns should be addressed at preliminary approval which may affect the number of units that can be constructed. And then he goes through and lists those, those issues that, he, that he's got that need to be addressed at preliminary. This is a letter from AGEC, which is our geotechnical review engineer. And um, what he says is the resort, no, I'm sorry, the reports adequately address the geologic and geotechnical aspects of the proposed development with the following exceptions. And he goes through and mentions um, slope stability and high plastic clay and underground mine workings and those types of things. Um, We've always told all our review consultants that um, we're looking at this at a master plan level and we want to know if there are any serious issues with feasibility. Um, so he was comfortable making this recommendation with the requirement that these be further addressed at preliminary. This is Elaine Boyd, our, uh, our consultant on water quality that, that works for the Provo River Water Users Association. And she has some, 
some concerns that she's asked about. Um, there is a voluntary cleanup um, being done on this site, referred to as a BCP, which is administered by the state DEQ. And they, the applicant is going through that now with DEQ. Um, any of these areas that are need to be cleaned up will have to be done so. And at this stage of the approval process, what we're saying is if there are issues with the VCP and any mining issues, that those will have to be addressed further. If the, the density comes down because of those some of those issues, that will have to be um, considered. So. This is the DRC sign-off. Um, I think a number of these have been addressed, but the comments that, that I've got here are under Public Works, um, Brandon Clough, our Public Works Director, he says, uh, I would like to know what work will be done on the old mine road. Um, I think he's referring to the old rail alignment, railbed alignment, I believe. And my understanding is that all roads will be private. Um, I'm not sure if that main loop road was intended to be private. But something certainly to be discussed. Under Twin Creeks or GSSD, sorry, he says water and sewer feasibility letter has been issued and it goes before the water board on August 7th, which has been done. It appears that sufficient water rights are in place to serve the amended master plan for the village, not including snowmaking, but this decision is up to the water board. So the water board took action on that and approved the. Uh, the uh, density for the water that they have 